The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Okay, so you may have heard me already say this uh, to our humble trustee in the back of the church there, but uh, the devil seems to have thrown a welcome back to church at me because you'll notice there's no music going on here. Erica called me 20 minutes ago to say she wasn't feeling well. Don't know what the deal is. Uh, I don't think she knows what the deal is. So if she's feeling better here, she's going to roll in, um, but I don't expect to see her during this service. So the reason why we are starting late, and I apologize for that, I had to burn a CD to throw in there quick, and that takes a little bit of time. So that's my first announcement. Uh, my second announcement is if any of you were praying for me last Sunday to like not have a heart attack at mile eight or whatever, I'm pleased to tell you that uh, the half marathon went great last week. It went really great, actually. Um, and I'm just happy as all get out that I have run three half marathons in the last five months. So thank you. So never did that before. You know, you didn't have to do that, but thank you. Um, so anyway, here are the announcements. Let's get on to the more important things. Um, first of all, a few weeks ago, we added the name Carol Ross to the prayer list. She is my aunt. And she was called to the church triumphant in the place that Jesus prepared for her on Friday. So I'm telling you that for two reasons. One, obviously, we're going to pray for her family here in a few minutes. And secondly, I'm hoping to be able to attend her funeral, which means I'll be going to Wisconsin, which means I'll be out of the office a few days this week. So if you are looking for me in a few days and you can't find me or... You get me on my cell phone and I start talking in my Wisconsin accent again, that is the reason why. So I, I don't know when the funeral is going to be. If they do it like next Saturday, then I'm not going to be able to attend because I need to be back here on Sunday. But if they do it midweek and I can figure out a flight plan, uh, I intend to go to the, the funeral. Uh, all right, so we're doing script orders today. Uh, if you see Judy later, you can uh, uh, get set up with her. Um, and uh, if uh, you want to do anything for teacher appreciation or end of the school, now's the time to take care of that. Uh, we have changed the week for VBS. Uh, it's going to be June 13th to the 17th from 6 to 7.30. So uh, take note of that if uh, that is something that uh, uh, will meet your needs. Also want to announce that we're going to be having a voters meeting on June 5th. And if you know the bylaws, it's supposed to be in May, but there was no day, date in May that we could make it work. So it's going to be June 5th. And there's going to be a few things in this voters meeting that you need to know about ahead of time. First of all, uh, without going into a lot of detail now, for the last, I don't know, six months, between the preschool board, the El Board of Elders, and the church council, we have been talking about building another building back here with basically a family life center and some more classrooms and stuff. Just talking. No money's been spent, nothing's been done, but we're at the point in these conversations where we need to ask the voters assembly if you want us to move forward on this and start taking this more seriously. So we need to discuss that at the next voters meeting, okay? Uh, the second thing is uh, Rufus is not getting any younger. And uh, Eric and I are implementing his plan into semi-retirement because he's starting to get arthritis in his back legs and stuff like that. And so if this congregation wants to continue in a comfort dog ministry, uh, then we need some uh, new handlers. We need to do some fundraising. Uh, and so we want to announce this ahead of time. We don't just want to say, okay, we're out. Um, but we can't continue with the staff we currently have. We don't have enough handlers. And... We've got enough in his account to cover his dog food and stuff, but if we want to get another dog, that's going to be $22,000. And so we don't have that. You might remember he cost like 10 or 12, but the cost has gone up since it's been about 10 years. So if we want to continue in this ministry, uh, if some of you are, you know, feel a calling to that, then talk to Erica, because so, she's the top dog now, uh, or let me know. Uh, but we need to announce that. And then thirdly, the Board of Elders and the Church Council have been talking uh, since our, our general fund is, I mean, we're blessed, we're looking real good right now, about giving a substantial gift to the uh, college student ministry at Texas Tech in Lubbock. And if you're wondering why there, that's where Jeff Jenkins is serving now, and he was a member here for 20, 25 years. So uh, Jeff would like to come and talk to you about what ministry is happening there, and that's going to happen on June 5th. 
Um, uh, and uh, uh, so he's going to preach that day. He's going to do a presentation during Bible class that day, and he'll be at the voters' meeting for any questions about that because we, it's not in the budget to do this. So we're going to need a voters' approval on that. All right. So that took longer than I wanted it to, but you guys need to know that stuff is coming up. I think that's all I have in terms of announcements. Anything I'm forgetting? Just a reminder on the communion between sin and the priest. Oh, um, so something else we're going to start doing today, you know, for two years we haven't been passing out the offering plates because of COVID, and in the Board of Elders we've decided even though COVID has gone away, you know, we can keep doing the offering the way we're doing it, but uh, when I'm done with the sermon, the elder is going to bring up the, the plates, which today is Todd, and I will go back to blessing the offering, but we're not going to pass the plates anymore simply because we're used to doing it this way now, and we'll save three minutes, so I'll get you to brunch a little faster, okay? So, uh, so just to let you know that's happening today. Anything else? All right. Uh, we do want to say happy birthday to Bob Drum and Colton Keelan, who are celebrating their birthdays today. Uh, so uh, God bless for that. And so, if you will then turn to page three of the bulletin, we will open with our opening hymn this morning, In Thee is Gladness. Again, I apologize for running late here this morning, and God bless our worship this morning. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore, be, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. One generation shall commend your works to another. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, they shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness. The Lord is good to all. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. And all your saints shall bless you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen.
First reading comes from the ninth chapter of Acts, beginning with the first verse. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus, and for three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul, for behold, he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who can't call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized, and taking food, he was strengthened. For some days he was with the disciples at Damascus, and immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed and said, Is this not the man who made havoc in Jerusalem of those who called upon his name? And has he not come here for this purpose, to bring them bound before the chief priests? But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews he lived in Damascus, who lived in Damascus by proving that Jesus was the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. Second reading comes from the fifth chapter of Revelation, beginning with the eighth verse. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Then I looked, and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. 
And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. This is the word of the Lord. I'm going to get taught a second here. The congregation will please stand that we can sing the common Alleluia and the verse, and then we will remain standing for the words of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place and, and fish laid out on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. And this was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted, but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, Follow me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. At this time you may be seated for our sermon hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The text for your sermon this morning, the biblical basis for our thoughts together here today are the words of the Gospel reading, which I read a few moments ago, the Gospel of St. John, chapter 21, beginning with verse 1. Have you ever blown it? Have you ever made a poor decision? Have you ever failed somebody? Have you ever hurt someone by your actions or disappointed someone by what you said or did? Certainly, if we ever go to school, if we have a job, if we are married, if we have parents, then we've done this, right? And when you have done this, The next question is, did the person that you hurt give you a second chance? Again, I think we all have, at least sometimes, right? I'll give you a couple examples of what I'm talking about here. First one comes from sports. We just completed the NCAA men's basketball tournament about a month ago, and there is a gentleman by the name of Tony Bennett, He is the coach at the University of Virginia, coaches the men's basketball team. And by the way, he's from Wisconsin, I just have to say that. And in 2018, the University of Virginia's men's basketball team was the number one seed in the tournament. And for the the first and, and only time in history of the men's basketball tournament, that year, they lost to a 16 seed, and no 16 seed had ever won before, no 16 seed has won since. And if you don't know the significance of that, the very bottom teams are ranked 16, the very top teams are ranked one. So the University of Maryland, Baltimore City College, I believe, was the team that beat Virginia. And because they were the first number one seed to lose to a 16 seed, there were many alumni and people in Virginia who wanted Tony Bennett fired. But the athletic director said, we're going to give him a second chance. And you know what happened the next season? He got that second chance, and they won the national championship, defeating Texas Tech. Okay. So he got a second chance. More personally, I can tell you that a little project that Matthew and I are working on right now is I'm trying to teach Matthew how to drive a car with a manual transmission, with a clutch. And I remember to this day the first time that I tried to drive a vehicle that had a clutch. My mother was fixing dinner. There were a few minutes to go. My dad was bored, and she looked at him and said, hey, take Mark around the block and try and teach him how to drive a manual. So we got in the car, a 1973 Ford Pinto Squire wagon, canary yellow with the wood paneling, ugliest car Ford ever built. I've told you about this car before, but anyway. So we just went around the block, right? In that time, I killed it five times, did three claw, 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 claw. You know how that works if you've got a manual. And I almost hit a parked car because I wasn't paying attention because I was trying to go like this, right? So when we got back, my dad's like, I'm not doing that again. But I did get a second chance to drive a car with a manual, and I finally figured it out. And to this day, pretty much every car I've driven, except that white car I have out there, every car I've bought for me, had a manual, because I like driving a manual. So I got a second chance. Well, Jesus is like this, right? He gives second chances. Jesus loves those whom he calls so much that even though we blow it big time, we fail him badly, we deny him flat out sometimes by what we say and do. Jesus doesn't smite us. He doesn't throw us away. Instead, again, he tells us to come to him. Jesus is the savior of second chances. Now, if you want proof of what I'm talking about here, we see this all the time in the Bible. Again, and again, and again, Jesus' disciples prove to be weak and lousy at what they do. Our gospel text today is kind of an example. The gospel last week was an example. After Jesus' death, Peter and his colleagues were afraid of the Jews. They were hiding out in the upper room where they'd had the Last Supper on Thursday night, they were afraid that what had happened to Jesus was going to be done to them. And then Jesus shows up. He appears to the, uh, uh, the apostles, even though the door was locked. And he says, Shalom. He gives Peter and the rest his peace. 
And along with the other apostles, Peter received the spirit and authority of the risen Lord to forgive and retain sins. And if you remember your catechism in the Lutheran church, we call this the office of the keys. But Jesus reinstated them, if you will, on Easter Sunday night. Well, here in today's gospel is another example. At the beginning of the text, the apostles, they don't know what to do. They've seen Jesus twice now, Easter Sunday night and the Sunday night a week later when Thomas did the whole my Lord and my God thing. You know what? I didn't say the doubting thing. I said the my Lord and my God thing. We should remember Thomas, that he confessed Jesus and served as a faithful apostle, not that he had a moment of doubt. So they're just sort of sitting around. They don't know what to do. Jesus is not with them because, I mean, Jesus didn't spend the whole 40 days from his resurrection to ascension with them. Pentecost hasn't happened yet. And so I read in a devotion this week from the Lutheran Hour that you know, Peter seems to just had, had kind of an itch, kind of a, I don't know what to do, uh, let's fall back in our old habits, let's go fishing, because that's what Peter and Andrew and James and John did for a living before meeting Jesus. So they say, okay, we'll go fishing. And so in those days, you would spend the whole night fishing, and they caught nothing. And so you see here, Peter and the gang, it's, it's kind of like they're trying to get on with their lives without Jesus. They're trying to live their lives without Jesus, and, you know, that's not going to work well. And we know how that goes because I'm guessing that we've all seen family or friends who have gone through life without a clue as to what's really important. They make a lot of money and they think they're happy. They pretend life is satisfying in and of itself, and we know how that will end up if you're if you don't have Jesus in here, everything is, is vanity, right? And worse, we ourselves, if we're honest with ourselves, we may have chosen a job, we may have asked someone out on a date, we may have asked someone to marry us, all without considering God's will, all without asking God, what do you think I should do? We chase our toys, our good times, our next raises eagerly, but sometimes when it comes to God, we hear God's word and we answer God's call with indifference instead of doing what we're supposed to do. So going back to our text, we see that the risen Jesus in his mercy appears to these seven apostles once again, and there's some unfinished business that Jesus needs to take care of. We see the risen Lord help Peter and the rest catch fish and more, and this is just like what happened in Luke chapter 5. If you've got a good gospel memory, you know that when Jesus called Peter and Andrew and James and John, they had come in, they had caught no fish, Jesus sent them back out, they caught a bunch of fish, and then Jesus said, follow me. Same thing happens here in terms of the fish. And now the apostles realize, especially John, that it is the Lord. He's come back again. And Peter puts his clothes back on because he figures, I better not you know, go up to Jesus you know, just in my you know, underclothes and stuff they would work in overnight. And what joy it must have been for them to see Jesus again. And know what a privilege it was for them to see him again after his resurrection. But then we get to the last verses of this text. And sometimes folks have a question about what Jesus is up to here. And I'm going to answer that here this morning. Because this is important. Jesus, in these first three resurrection appearances, has let the apostles know that they have been forgiven. They've been forgiven for running away from him, for abandoning him in the garden, for leaving him up at the cross by himself, although John was there. Jesus, by his actions, has told the boys that they are back in his good graces. But Jesus and Peter still have what I believe is some unfinished business here. Now, of course, you remember Peter think before he speaks brash, I am the walk and I, I'm the rock and I walked on water so now I'm full of myself, Peter. And Peter showed himself as a human, as a sinner, that he had, that he was weak and afraid sometimes because we know that on Monday, Thursday night, when Jesus was at the house of Caiaphas, the high priest, that in the courtyard there, Peter three times denied that he even knew who Jesus was, just as Jesus predicted he would do. I believe for Peter on that day on that beach that that still bothered him. It had to, right? And think of this from Peter's perspective. First of all, he told Jesus, you know, I'll die before I deny you. 
And the other thing is, you know, the, the third time that he denied Jesus, he, it's, the Bible says that he swore that he didn't know who Jesus was. So that is, in effect, he was saying, God, send me to hell to Sheol if I have ever known this God. So we can see how Peter would still be feeling guilty these days after Easter Sunday. And remember, it was a three-time denial, and so Jesus gives Peter the opportunity to confess his love for him three times, fixing Peter's three-time denial. I think this was a form of absolution, what Jesus is doing here with, you know, Peter, do you love me? Feed my lambs. Now, Jesus didn't use the words that we use in our liturgy for absolution, but I believe that Jesus here was communicating to Peter that he was forgiven three times for denying him three times. Jesus personally renews Peter in his call to follow him and shepherd his flock. So here's what I want you to remember today. And this is important. Jesus always restore us, restores us when we fail him. Is there some sin you keep committing again and again and again? Some bad habit, an addiction, a weakness? I have good news. Jesus has fixed it. The absolution I say, the absolution you hear every Sunday morning really works again and again and again. The supper we receive here reinstates us again and again and again. Jesus forgives you again and again and again. Now, this doesn't mean that we can sin boldly and let grace abound. I do not want you to hear today, oh, I can just do whatever I want and then say I'm sorry and then we're going to be good. The Christian life does not work that way, and you know the Christian life does not work that way. Over the years, I have heard several stand-up comedians on TV who were raised Roman Catholic make the joke about, yeah, you can go to confession and say, I did this and this, and then I got a clean slate, and you just go out and do everything all over again. That's not the way the Christian life works. We are called to do what he wants us to do, and we need to try and do that. But when we fail, we know that when we turn to him in repentance, he will forgive us. His death and resurrection guarantees that for us. Jesus forgives. So I want to close with this story. And this was from a, another Lutheran Hour devotion that, you know, they send this email out every day. I've been doing, receiving these for years. Some years back, I read the story in this devotion about a lady in Germany she lived in a town called Hildesheim, wherever that is. I was not in that town when I went to Germany. And she lost something. And it wasn't a, a set of keys, it wasn't a TV remote. What she actually lost was her car. Well, to be specific, she, the, her car was stolen, but here's the story. She had this automobile, an Audi, and she took her, her, her car into a mechanic to be serviced something I had to do with two vehicles this week on my week, week off. Boy, that costs a lot these days. But anyway, so she took her car in, and after doing the work, and I don't know if this is a Germany thing or if this is just this service place or if this because the lady was 82, but the mechanics drove her car to her house, put it in the garage, put the paperwork and the keys in the mailbox, and went on their way. So the next morning, she gets up, she gets dressed, she goes out to the mailbox, gets the keys, gets the paperwork, opens up her garage to go run some errands, and there's no car. She's like, so she calls the Polizei, files a report, they never find the car. She, our insurance pays her money, she gets a new car. Two years later, we're now going to talk about her neighbor. Her neighbor had a garage. Years earlier, had thrown some junk in the garage and hadn't been in the garage since. Never went in the garage. Like some people, you know, you got an attic above your house maybe. You throw stuff up there and then you don't go up there for years. And one day he decides, you know, I need to go through that junk and see if I can just get rid of it. 
opens up his garage door, guess what's in there? A very dusty Audi, about this much dust on it. And the, the, the Associated Press, in their story about this, and this just makes me laugh, because this is kind of an understatement. In the story it read, it didn't take police long to piece together that the mechanics had parked the car in the wrong garage. Duh. But the lady was very happy because now she had two cars, right? Well, there's always rejoicing when something lost is found, right? Rejoicing. That's what Jesus says happens in heaven when, sinner, when a sinner repents. He said, if a sinner repents, all heaven rejoices. And that's the way it should be. And any time the Savior's forgiveness becomes re a reality to a sinful human heart, that's a time of gladness. And any time a soul's final destination is changed from hell to heaven, from damnation to salvation, that's a blessed thing. And it's a blessed thing made possible by Jesus' death on the cross and by his resurrection. And so this is why I encourage you today. If you're stuck in some sin, if there's, there's something that you're having a hard time conquering, turn away from your sins and make, an angel, make some angels happy today. Be a sinner who repents. Turn away from your sins by the help of the Holy Spirit. Seek the grace of Jesus Christ because Jesus is the Lord of second chances and third chances and fourth chances. Repent. Seek the grace of Jesus and know his forgiveness again and again and again. In the name of Jesus, amen. And may the peace that surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. At this time, the congregation will please stand. Heavenly Father, please bless and receive these gifts which we give back to you from that which you have first given to us. Amen. We now confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Gotten of his Father before all worlds. God of God. Light of light, very God of very God, not made, being the one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. But the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have raised your Son from the dead to the praises of all angels and saints. Give strength to our hearts and voices that we with them would meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and speak of the might of your awesome deeds. Lord, in your mercy. Ever-living God, you raised up Saul from among your enemies that he would suffer for your name. Stir up all those baptized into your name and call many men to the service of your church. Sustain all who suffer for your gospel and continue to confound your enemies with your wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. 
Gracious Lord, one generation of your saints commends your works to another. As we have received your glorious gospel, grant all fathers and mothers strong and joyful faith to declare your mighty acts to the generation to come. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, enthroned in heaven, you have ordered all the nations of the earth and have set your church among them to shepherd them unto eternal life. Hear the prayers we continually offer for our rulers, especially Joseph and Kevin, and grant them faithful and peaceful service. Protect our troops, including Thomas, Chris, Preston, and Evan, Cannon, Teresa, David, and Maya. Grant Chris, David, and John, Ben, Debbie, Seth, Vanessa, Kendon, Christian, and Matthew. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate Lord, you are glorified in the sufferings of your faithful people. Teach us to trust you through all trials and graciously bear up those who struggle among us. Especially we pray for those printed in our bullets and insert. We especially give uh, prayers for Duane Anderson, who is in the hospital in Tulsa. And we pray for the family of Carol Ross, as you have called her to her place prepared in the church triumphant. We also take a moment now and pray silently in our hearts for all those that we know to be in need of the mercy and love of Jesus. And we pray that they would know the fullness of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Lord, you have prepared a feast again for us on the morning of your son's resurrection. Help us to rejoice greatly in this gift of his body and blood to receive it to our eternal good, that we too would rise at the last day. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
All right, the congregation will please stand that we can sing the post communion canticle, Thank the Lord. Thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn.
The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. All right, so that concludes our public worship together here this morning. Uh, we'll be getting Bible class, well, not at 9.30. We're running a little late here, but we'll, we will get to that. Uh, God be with you and bless you this day and this week.